Um, I'm a physician and I work, I have two roles. Uh, one role is Chief Quality and Performance Officer for the hospital. And, you know, I've worked at the hospital since I was a resident at the hospital that I'm working now. I was a, actually a medical student at it. Um, and then I became an employee of the hospital a year ago in this role of Chief Quality and Performance Officer. So I'd been working as a physician and credentialed as in my physician role, and then I switched over to uh, the dark side, as my colleagues would say. Um, and so being part of that dark side, you know, I, I, I wear the corporate hat. Um, but I recently, uh, not, not because I needed extra work to do, but I recently took on a role as vice chair of, uh, in the Department of Medicine in, in, for clinical services. And I'll just say that, that going back and forth between my hospital role and my departmental physician role has actually taught me that there are many, many layers to solve and to get through on this um, on this journey to ensuring our health services meet patient needs. And, and some of those are, are, many of those are structural, that the, there is some significant structural issues that we have to address. Um, and obviously are the different lenses we put on, on our planning activities and our care delivery activities are, are very relevant. And anyways, either I'm just gonna share with you some of the things that we've learned along the way at the Ottawa Hospital. As, um, as the previous speaker, there, there's a lot of people who are contributing to this work. And in a way, I have a little bit of an outside view on some of those activities. I, you know, we have a great chief of staff who's focused. We have a great chief nursing executive who's very focused on this. Obviously, our CEO takes it very um, importantly, as does our board. So the fact that we have that, and, and you know, the legislation in Ontario does help us with the excellent uh, Care for All Act. But, you know, as, as Patricia was talking, to have governments speak to this as a top priority uh, does help us move things forward to where we want it to go. So here's, here's a, a graph which I think, or a table that uh, illustrates where, where the challenges are and what kind of outcomes you can hope to achieve in moving this agenda forward. We were talking about managing performance. Um, and, and you know, we've got two bits of, two, two time points, 2011 and, and year to date 2015. We have our NRC picker survey for our inpatient, uh, inpatient uh, um, cohort. Um, and you'll see that in, in 2011, you know, we, when we started our journey on trying to improve patient experience, 95% uh, of people said, you know, it was positive when we said, please rate your overall rating of care. And, and positive is uh, good, very good, or excellent. Um, and, you know, that, so that means that in, in, 19, in 2011, only 5% of people said it was, poor, um, you, know, you know, not good or poor. Um, and, and, you know, we had to motivate a, a workforce who were largely telling us but the care I provide is already excellent, why should I change? And I think that's probably the second part of that is, you know, if you have data that says you're pretty good and you have a workforce that sort of pushed it back on you that says, you know, we're doing well, uh, like I do well, don't, don't tell me to change, then you're gonna be stuck and it will be very difficult to move things forward. And we were stuck. And, and actually I would say we've been, you know, it's taking time to move things forward. Um, and you can see our results, you know, largely our ability to get rid of the, 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 the not good and, and poor is gradually shifting, but we have been able to move the bar on the percentage of people who say, say it's excellent. And I would say that we've, be, we've been somewhat successful in changing some of the attitudes of our providers. Um, and, and, you know, I put the physician quote, but, the, you know, largely those quotes could be taken for any of the professionals in, in our hospital. I, I would say, like, in terms of moving things forward, what are the key success factors that we've had? One is a commitment. And the commitment has to come from that top-level leadership. Uh, the performance measures, and I'll speak to, speak to these in a little bit more detail. And, and you know, I, I know that during, throughout the, the last couple of days, and actually the last speaker, that you know, the, the, the development of measures that mean things to the patients and all, all reflect behaviors by the providers are the key issues that you need to focus on. Because at the end of the day, you have to manage the providers or create environments and systems that allow for those behaviors to exist so that patients have better experiences. So the measures have to reflect those things. And then, you know, you can't forget that we have to, we have to develop leadership. And that the leadership is actually, you know, at the, the big L leaders that we have in our organizations, but, but it's at the front lines as well. We have to train people to, to do this work that we're asking them. We can't just uh, ignore the fact that there is a gap in much of our professional training when it comes to ensuring patient experiences are, are, are high quality. 
And, and I'll just get into those issues a little bit in detail now. So on the, on the commitment side, I don't know how well you can read that from the back, but this is showing a high-level strategy map for our hospital. And you can see that our vision, and, and this is where you know, the commitment starts, what is our vision? To provide each patient with the world-class care, exceptional service, and compassion that we want for our loved ones. And so, you know, that speaks, I think, to everybody uh, in our organization as to what we're expecting from each other and what we're expecting from the service, the, 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 the place of work where, we, where we're providing that service. Um, the other part of this is that there is a benchmarking explicit in our strategy map, that there is an explicit p piece of benchmarking, that we're aiming for the top, we're aiming for the best. And, and I think, actually, that's one of the things that we've been able to use to get the physicians and other care providers, other professionals on board. Because, you know, when you go back and look at our overall rating of care, everyone's saying we're pretty good. You, you know, when we go and drill down further and compare ourselves to other hospitals, other teaching hospitals in Canada and elsewhere, we see there are gaps there. And there are other, in, other hospitals, other organizations who have driven massive improvements in that percent excellent rating. And so, you know, but if we've put that explicitly in our, in our, in our mission and our vision and our goals, that, that we're going to be the, the best, that helps move people. And, you know, most people do want to do the best that they can, so that, that does help. The other thing that, that, that's helped is we've created uh, a physician engagement agreement or a compact. And, I, you know, there have been other institutions that have done that. We followed the example of Virginia Mason uh, uh, Hospital in, 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 in Washington uh, uh, State in, 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 in the United States. And really what this is is, a, is a, a, a formal agreement between physician, a, a physician and, and the hospital. And it stipulates the things that, patient, that, that the physicians will do uh, that will ensure that patient uh, care and their commitment to the organization are high quality. And this has to be signed annually by every physician in our place. This was not just, we, we went through a process to develop, to develop this commitment. And really, to a large extent, this does reflect professional responsibility to the institution and to the patients that we're looking after. But, but under that compassion bullet, you'll see for, on the physician side, recognize patients as the primary focus of our collective efforts and advocate on their behalf. I mean, that's a pretty critical thing. And that, again, that's now being built into our performance reviews under the commitment to quality, practice leading medical care, and, and measure progress. So there is two pieces there that we can hold the physicians accountable to and that they've agreed to and they're working to, to, to work on that with. Um, in terms of uh, moving forward, and again, this is again on the commitment side, the engaging patients and families in planning and oversight, you know, we have several levels which patients and families are participating in planning and oversight, and that includes at our corporate level, a programmatic level, and in an annual planning. And, and, you know, part of it, that again, is the leadership has been set by our province and our, our Ministry of Health, but <coughs> part of it has been, you know, individual leaders within our institution kind of getting ahead of the curve. But, you know, in our annual planning process, uh, we create a, a corporate scorecard, which has eight measures on it, uh, one of which is our overall rating of care. And the overall rating of care accounts for 50% of the weight to our corporate scorecard. So, and, you know, that, that has gotten a lot of endorsement from our patient group, obviously. But you can see that now that the feedback from patients on our surveys is feeding back to every, almost everything we do. If it's 50% of the weight and 50% of the pay at risk that our executives receive is all related to patient experience. That really does change the behavior. Another thing that's come out of this has been that there has been a very much alignment of physician leadership with the hospital leadership. And again, you know, people outside of healthcare might say, well, how could they be not aligned? But, you know, there is a different, there are different uh, um, lines of accountability through the organization um, for the physicians. And in our institution, our chief of staff and our CEO have the same scorecard. They have the same metrics, the same thing. So the fact that 50% of the, uh, the, the CEO's uh, concern is on patient experience and 50% of the, of, the, of the scorecard on the, on the physicians is on patient experience really does speak to the alignment. And I think that does help. And again, that's come from because of the, really the oversight and planning that's coming through patient feedback. The other thing that we've done is, you know, we have worked to develop measures at the physician level. This is a, a, a report that's available. It's updated, you know, uh, at real time, essentially. This shows overall rating of care for our inpatient survey on, uh, with top box ratings uh, for physicians in my division where I work in, in uh, general medicine. I'd like to say that I'm the, uh, that the bar that has the, the high one, but uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I actually don't know that that's, uh, that's uh, 
but they, but you know the physicians will will all have their own own scores and will you know what's happening now is that all of the physicians are phoning up that that ID and saying hey how do we do things uh, differently so that we can all get better the fact that uh, you know, I can say that there's often a bit of pushback about the NRC picker survey. There's a sample size issue, there's a sampling issue, and of course that exists. So what we've done is we've started to say, okay, well, how can we get more real-time measures built into this? And we, again, part of the fact that the corporation cares so much about it means that there's investment in these things. And so we've built measurement systems. These are data that are coming out of our post-discharge phone call program that we have. Again, this is at um, this is at a, di at a div divisional level, but we can again get this at the physician level. And this question here is um, after patients go home, we, ask, we, we phone them a couple of days later and ask them about a variety of questions about their transitional care. And in this particular question, this particular question is about have you developed any unusual symptoms or problems? Now part of the phone call is, to, is it's really actually to solve the problem that the patient has but we're also using that opportunity to capture information. And we're also asking patients about problems with their prescriptions, problems with uh, their follow-up appointments, problems with um, uh, any, any problem, really. And, and if those problems exist, we, we, that we have nurses that we triage the calls to, they deal with it, but they can also escalate to the physician that was involved or the unit where the patient was discharged. And again, what we do is we, we, we've standardized that process to the extent that we can, so that with, when the data comes back, we can report back at a, uni, a nursing unit level or a, 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 a physician level, hey, you know what, you know, your discharge summaries were not available in 20% of the patients that you discharged. That, now that gets incorporated into that physician's um, performance review or, you know what, you know, your colleagues, uh, you know, 5% of them had, the patients had prescription problems and yours, 30% of them had prescription problems. You might want to go back and work. Uh, and, and the reason we're focusing on those particular things about prescriptions and follow-up appointments and these unusual symptoms that develop, we know that those are problems that patients typically have when they get home. So again, we want, our, we want to drive our professionals to look after and pay attention to those particular issues when the patients are being sent home. And so again, tying the performance measure to the behaviors. So starting at the top, what are the things that drive patient experience? What are the, the behaviors that we can, what are the symptoms that can come up if, if the behaviors are not, if, if the behaviors are not ideal? And then, and then tying that to our behaviors that we're, we're seeing. And again, the final thing I think which is really important is working on our leadership development. And, and I think you can't really do any of this without bringing the leaders along. And uh, you know, obviously some leaders within your institutions are gonna be stronger than others, but you know, you do need to raise the bar for every, to, to get everyone to the, at least some level. And there's some specific things that I think need to be paid attention to. One is uh, the performance uh, reviews, and, and there's, a, there's the performance reviews of the, of the physicians, but then of the, of the physician leaders or the other professional leaders, but then down to the actual physicians themselves. And so, you know, we've created expectations of that. An annual physician performance review has to be documented uh, we've done the same on our, on our nursing side. Actually, all our staff have a, a requirement for annual performance reviews documented. Um, and, you know, we've done some work with, other, with, our, with, with regular check-ins with our staff. Regular, and and as, as much as possible, these, these performance reviews are informed by, by objective data and direct observations. The other thing is on the training, there's a bunch of other things that we pay attention to. There's set, how do we set the tone? Part of what I think is really important for patient experience is to, 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 make, to flip it from the provider focus that we tend to have to make sure that people are always looking at, at things from the patient experience. Um, and I think that's one of the hardest things to change from our mindsets. And, and one of the ways that we've been doing that is through reading letters of concerns that patients provide, uh, reading letters of you know, you know, where people are sort of thanking us for our services, because typically what that does is they identify specific behaviors where there were gaps. Um, you know, setting the tone obviously by having this scorecard reviewed regularly with the metrics where we're doing well or not. Um, the other thing that we really pay attention to is closing the gap between performance and expectations, so helping our providers understand where there's gaps around communication. Again, the specific behaviors in the communication that can demonstrate uh, you know, how we demonstrate empathy, how we, how, because, you know, oftentimes when you speak to the providers who are part of this is they actually are in their minds empathetic and compassionate, but their body language or 
how they're, you know, how they're conducting the discussion with the patients are not conducive to demonstrating it to the patient. The patient's left not thinking that the person doesn't care. And so it's really about flipping that around. And last but not least, I think it's really important for leadership and for people managing performance not to forget about the fact that there are a lot of things that inform the patient experience beyond the provider. Um, and the, it's, it, there is a system that people are working in. And I think we have to kind of understand that when we're working to develop solutions to this. And, and you know, there is a... There is a balance between understanding the, the role of the system and then the responsibility of individuals. And I, I and I've spent a lot of time talking about focusing on individual performance feedback. But at the at the management and leadership uh, issue, we do need to understand the interplay between our systems and the environments where people work and, and the patient experience. So for example, you know, in our institution, we have a lot of trouble getting people home at the at the back end. When if there's a need for subacute care or home, home care, we can't always get it when we need it. And so what happens is patients tend to be in hospital for a long period of time that tends to keep them in an environment that may not be optimum for them. What that tends to do is in backlog other parts of the system, and so patients are in the emergency department getting care or in, sometimes in hallways, and obviously those are not great places for patients to be having their privacy or dignity looked after. And, and part of the problem is we may do a lot of work to improve the, the physician's own or the nurse's own behaviors, but the system constraints themselves, the bottlenecks, could actually set up people to, to behave in ways that are not uh, optimal. And so I think we do have that responsibility of trying to, to be aware where those challenges are and actually put in place specific strategies related to that. We, you know, we, we can't necessarily build new beds in our system but what can we do as providers that actually have targeted where <coughs> patients are, are blocked from that, that flow and, and actually have very specific strategies, communication strategies about addressing their concerns that, that may take away some of the, some of the um, negativity and the negative situation. The other thing is managers, we can under see when, when our providers get stressed and get put in a situation where they may not work well as a team and again, make very specific strategies to de-escalate or train staff how to deal with those issues. And I think that's really, uh, really, really important. Obviously, if we can remove some of those constraints of the bed blocks, some of those issues go, go right go away. And, and you know, we need, to, we need to do that. So anyway, here's our score. I mean, we've worked really hard at this. And I can tell you our CEO uh, is um, incredibly committed to this as, as his main uh, focus and his main effort and you know he he's pushing us hard as a team to to get to get better um and i would argue you know we're only halfway there probably we're not even not even halfway there it's been four years and, and one of the things i think probably most of us should recognize is that there are major structural issues just to bring it back to that starting point and without a concerted effort without learning from best practices like you're trying to do today uh, we're not going to get there. It's it's going to have to be. A, we're going to have to have a, a full court press on this, and everyone's input's got to got to help us. So anyway, thank you.